Hey guys, so I was making some videos about internships and working on my other channel. So as many of you know, I own a small marketing company. I own it outright now. I used to have three other investors, but beginning of the year, I bought them all out. So I was making, I, I hired someone recently. Uh, See, so we'll start as a 1099 vendor and if the relationship goes well, she is pretty much a remote worker and she lives in Houston, but she works remotely or will work remotely because I don't micromanage people. She lives maybe an hour away. Therefore, it makes sense for her not to make the drive. It's an hour both ways. I would rather have her save the time and stress and work harder and concentrate. And if you can't trust your, your employees, your vendors, then that is on you because you probably chose the wrong people. So back to Wizards of the Coast, I've never seen a system where pay the pros, pay the artists, pay the judge, literally, and then the Magic players have to pay more for the events. Magic Fest is significantly more expensive. Channel Fireball events used to be $40. Now they are 90 what happened? I mean, vendors, yes, the convention got more expensive. Vendors, uh, there were maybe were less of them. So there was less money on the vendor type of deal. But we see a lot of cutbacks from China Fireball. And recently they said that in all likelihood in 2018, they will not be profitable. So again, they increased prices, they decreased judge compensation, artist compensation, and yet they're still not profitable. So what is the issue? And they've been on a record saying that MTG Arena has driven more people and they expect it to drive more people, even more people in 2019. So I'm viewing this from purely a business perspective is how do you treat your vendors? How do you treat your quote employees? I know I know that the judges will never be classified as employees, but essentially they are, right? Without them, who would run the tournament? Without them taking the test and being qualified, uh, when I think of employment, I think of, oh, you have to take a specific test for this job, like a training session in that way. Even Subway, uh, there is a two-day period where they train you and then you're allowed to work at Subway. And that's just Subway. So magic is probably very similar. You have to study for your judge test, then pass it, and then you might get, quote, compensated by the tournament organizer. The more I read about this, the more uh, strange it becomes. So a magic gathering artist gets a base pay of $1,000 for a artwork now they do get to keep the original and some of these original artworks can sell for tens, $20,000, easy. But not for the regular artwork and it is heavily dependent on what piece you get. Tamagoy will always sell for a lot more even if we believe it is a worse piece of artwork than the common that no one wants to play with. So, they get $1,000 for a piece of artwork that they may spend multiple weeks doing at the base pay. That's very strange. Uh, that is very strange that they don't have in-house artists, that everyone is essentially a freelancer. So if you look at the model, they are a huge company, a billion dollar company. And the way that they structured it is no one has health insurance. Again, judges, do they have health insurance? No, they're not employees. They're being compensated but with judge promos. The players, the professional players, do they have health insurance? No. In fact, when they book a plane ticket for a professional player, they put it as gift, or which means that they, the professional player is responsible for those taxes. So let, let me repeat that again the taxes are put onto these people and they don't have health insurance. That is what a 1099 contractor is. I was thinking about that for my own workers. Uh, we always start them off as 1099 contractors because 
Uh, we want to see if they work. They fit the culture and they want to be here. A lot of times it's a, a fit. It's not just me saying, okay, I want you to be here. They have to want to be here too. Otherwise, they will leave. Uh, the reason we do that 1099 in the beginning for 30 or 60 days is we we don't want to risk hiring someone outright and then paying unemployment for many years before, which my previous startup did, is a startup has a very high turnover. And if everyone is getting unemployment, on my previous startup, 25% of our payroll was going to people who worked uh, a few months and then left and then collected unemployment for two years. This is the American system. And there's not very much you can do because you cannot convince that person who left. to. So if they took another job, we actually had a case where uh, the person took a yoga job or it was a yoga instructor after she left. And then the IRS was really angry with her and they wanted to say, hey, you took a job. You shouldn't be having unemployment. So we're going to re we're going to take back all of the unemployment. That sometimes happens too. So if you work a job and then you leave the job for whatever reason, uh, the only thing is if you're fired for cause, then you don't get unemployment, but that has to be proven. And that has to be proven through like dialogues and emails. And it's very, it's not that easy to prove. But everyone, uh, no one should want to be a vendor forever. No one should want to be a 1099 work for hire forever. Eventually, you want to get a real job. You want to uh, have health insurance. I mean, how would you start a family if you were an artist and you didn't have health insurance, right? Many of you will say, oh, content creators, some that I'm not going to mention here, they can buy their own health insurance, but a lot of times they're not going to. I mean, the mana source is one very good example of someone who should be making enough money to buy health insurance, but chooses not to. And it's easy to choose not to because it's not provided to you. So your employ if you are a W-2, if you're an employee, the health insurance isn't even an option. It's just given to you. Now you get to choose what health insurance you want. And if you wanted to get off the, the company health insurance, you could do that. So one of the uh, things that really strikes me as odd is the artists or vendor there's no in-house artist for such a huge game everyone is a 1099 no health insurance you pay all the taxes vendor and then so all the judges they are all vendors as well the professional players are all vendors they are treated as such when they, they get plane tickets and they win money. They're just vendors. Or even when they get paid to go to events like the Magic Silver Showcase. right? That event where they all got paid $12,500 just, just to show up. That was a terrible concept for an event. I don't even understand it very much how that was the best utilization of the money was to pay a bunch of how many people actually viewed that event and liked it? You couldn't even there was beta Arabian Nights. You couldn't even buy the card. So what were you selling at the event? You couldn't sell Arabian Nights. You couldn't sell beta or alpha. So in conclusion, the Wizard of Coast model slash Channel Fireball model. I mean, cosplayers, right? If they were paid, they would not be paid as employees for sure. No one is a employee. Everyone is a 1099 vendor without health care. This is a terrible system to be in. And this is something very terrible to encourage. I mean, yeah, it's okay to try out. But if you've been a judge for 10 years and you've been working events for 10 years, why are you still a 1099 vendor? You've done enough for the company for them to reward you with an actual job and health care and benefits and 401k retirement. We live in the era where the big companies, like which billion dollar company Hasbro, is relying on all these freelancers pretty much. And what happens when these freelancers don't show up? What happens when these freelancers protest that they're being underpaid, which they are? 
you have to understand that a thousand dollars is not a lot to a freelancer because they have to pay their own taxes and they have to pay their own health insurance. They have to pay their own supplies. So if it's a digital artist, they have to pay Adobe a monthly fee. When you are an employee, that gets taken care of by the company. So we have laptops, we have things. If a laptop breaks, I don't expect the employee to pay two, two and a half thousand dollars for them to buy their own laptop again. Um, one of the things that I find most, uh, so again, I work in digital marketing. We do a lot of graphic design is when you ask a graphic designer to use his or her own laptop to do the high volume. Because graphic design is very, very tiresome on your laptop. It's the same thing as Uber and Lyft. I know a lot of you guys are fans of that. I am not a fan of that. They pay you $15 an hour, but your car is being destroyed. And who pays when your car has a flat tire? Who pays when your car engine doesn't work? These are all costs that you have to attribute when you're using your own. And that's why employees at my place are not even allowed to use their own stuff because I don't want that to happen because I would feel bad and I don't want to buy them a new laptop, a personal laptop, so everyone uses company stuff. Company iPads when... when uh, I remember when we were going to anime conventions selling artwork and stuff. Yeah, I paid for the iPad. I mean, artwork was terrible, by the way, but I think uh, Jess knows that. And the iPad pencil, I wouldn't expect an employee to pay for the supplies necessary to do the work. But a vendor has to do that. So therefore, a vendor should be charging much more than the employee because they have overhead cost. Um, an employee's overhead is insurance, um, maybe dental, vision. Uh, it's going to be Social Security. It'll be a 401k. It'll, that's all money that the employer puts into the employee. Um, it'll be training, as I mentioned in my other channel, that if someone's not doing unpaid internship, I think unpaid internships are crap uh, because the you know, they're supposed to be learning, but if someone's not paying you and you're just showing up, they're not going to teach you. Let me point blank say that. There's no reason for them to teach you because you'll be gone in three months anyway, and there'll be a new intern. So what's the point of keep to keep teaching people when you know that they're going to leave because they're not getting paid, and therefore you're not really, you can't teach them anything because you the new intern that you're going to get three months from now is not going to know what you taught them. So anyway, that is my perspective as someone who owns a business. Um, it's just, it's very disgraceful. Um, that's how I feel. I feel if someone's worked for you and done a good job, you need to give them health insurance. You need to give them a decent pay. You have to, the trial period is perfectly fine in my opinion because you don't know. And a lot of times it's not just, I'm a boss, do I want this employee? A lot of times is. This employee is trying something new, especially entry-level workers. Do they want to actually do social media? It looks good on paper, but then when they actually learn how boring it is, do they want to do it? Do they want to make websites? Do they actually have the skills set necessary to be a developer? Some people think they do, and it turns out they don't. Well, it's better for me and the potential employee to both agree and say, okay, well, it didn't work out, and we tried it. Um, sorry, but after a period of time, 60, at most 90 days, you know that judge who's been working for events for 10 years, that's a professional. You know that pro player who's been playing Magic for 10 years and that's all they do and write articles and stuff? That is a professional. Article writers don't get paid money. Content writers don't get paid money. They, get, they don't get jobs. No one has a job in the system. Like, who has a job in the system? The artist is not W-2. The pros are not W-2. The judges are not W-2. Who's left? The players obviously are not W-2. Um, the vendors are not W-2. My, the cosplayers are not W-2. So if you don't know what W-2 is, in America, it's like full-time employment. It's a right to health insurance and benefits. 
uh, the culture is just very, very, I mean, literally we, this, the whole magic community is going to eventually rely on GoFundMe when they get older and medical conditions come up because they haven't bought health insurance. No one has health insurance in this system because why would they buy it when they're barely making a living? Uh, that's not going to be like when you get health insurance from an employer, you take it because everyone has it. Now you get to choose like different levels of it. And maybe you want to pay a little bit more for a higher level. Maybe you don't want to pay a little bit more. But I think every company in America um, has to have health insurance for its employees uh, if they are full-time employees. But even having a part-time employee, I, a lot of the liability shifts on the employer. These are not even part-time employees. These are just people who have no idea where they've gotten into. And eventually, when it's time for retirement and there's no 401k, there's no nest egg, there's no savings, what are they going to do? Keep playing magic? Keep judging magic? Keep cosplaying? Like, what are your outs? Anyway, bye guys.